felt the sick rising in me again, and I thought, what am I supposed to do? The floor's covered in sick. My clothes are covered in sick. The cat's feet towel <laughs> is a write-off. <laughs> Frankly, the pan basin's overflowing with sick. The toilet's overflowing with sick. What am I supposed to do? Then I opened my eyes and I looked down. And on my left, on the floor, kneeling down, smiling, looking up at me, was Jesus. <laughs> and he was pointing at his open mouth. <laughs> as if what he wanted <laughs> was for me to vomit into the open mouth of Christ. And I looked down and I thought, this can't be right. <laughs> but he was pointing and laughing and smiling and encouraging me. And then I remembered he did have some history of sacrifice. So against, <laughs> against my better judgment, at his apparent insistence, I did it. I vomited into the open mouth of Christ until the mouth of Christ was overflowing <laughs> with my sick. So I vomited into the open mouth of Christ. <laughs> and I stepped back and I shut my eyes and I thought, that's it now, surely, no more. But then I felt the sick rising in me again. And I thought, what am I supposed to do now? The floor is covered in sick. My clothes are covered in sick. The cat's feet towel is covered in sick. The sink's overflowing with sick. The toilet's overflowing. The open mouth of Christ is overflowing with sick. What? What? And then I opened my eyes and I looked down and he was there again, Jesus, on my right. But this time he had his back to me. And he was doing a kind of handstand by the sink. And his raiment had slipped down. It looked like a kind of third length floral print hospital gown. And he had his right hand on the floor to, to balance him upside down. And with his left hand, he was using the fingers to kind of splay open his anus. <laughs> as if what he... As if what he wanted... was for me to vomit into the gaping anus of Christ. And don't imagine, Charlie, that I come here and talk about this lightly, okay? I don't, I thought that I asked around, and I was a bit much, but I asked around. I said to, oh, I asked Tony Law, he's a Canadian stand-up comedian, he's the most reasonable man I know. I said to him, Tony, do you honestly think I can go around the country in front of people and use the phrase, I vomited into the big place? <laughs> and he said, well, possibly if it's in context. <laughs> shut my eyes and I thought that's it now surely no more 
But then I felt the sick rising in me again. And I thought, what am I supposed to do? The floor is covered in sick. My clothes are covered in sick. The cat's feet tail is ruined. The sink's overflowing with sick. The toilet, the anus. Then I remembered, lads, you know when you're doing a wee in the toilet, right? And there's a bit of poo on the back of the bowl. And you think, ooh, I'll hose that off. <laughs> That's my cleaning done for the week. <laughs> so what I did was I got my penis out and as... as respectfully and tenderly and accurately as I could. And I urinated into the gaping anus of Christ so that all the vomit there kind of foamed up and went on the floor leaving just enough room for me to vomit for one second and final time into the gaping anus of Christ, which I then did. And then my mum came in. <laughs> she looked at the sick on the floor. She looked at the sick all down my clothes. She looked at the cat's feet towel, all covered in sick. She was irritated by that. She looked at the sink overflowing with sick, the toilet overflowing with sick, the gaping anus of Christ overflowing with my sick. And she said to me, Have you been sick? <laughs> Into the gaping anus of Christ. And I said, No, this was like this when I got here. The cat must have done it. <laughs> and she said, the cat's in the garden and his feet are wet. <laughs> and I'd like to know what you propose to do about that, given the current state of the cat's feet. <laughs> and then she said to me, it was you, wasn't it? And I said, yes. And she said, let me give you some advice. And I listened because I love her and she tends to be right. She said, given your current situation, she said, and the state of the world as it is, she said, under no circumstances can you ever consider talking about this incident on stage. <laughs> and I said to her, well, I might have to. And she said, well, I can't stop you, but, she said, that's what she always used to do when I was a kid, I can't stop you, but, it's like putting the ball in your court. She said, I can't stop you, but, she said, if you are gonna talk about this, you have to know why you're doing it, what kind of point you're trying to make. And I said to her, well, three things, Mother. Firstly, to make the point that a symbol, be it an icon or a flag or whatever, is only as worthy of respect as the values of the people that appropriate it. Secondly, that if a symbol goes out into the world, into places where it's perhaps not understood or wanted or valued, you shouldn't be too upset if it then takes on a shape you don't recognise as your own. And thirdly, that if you attempt to apply limits to freedom of expression, either through legislation or intimidation or threats, what will then happen is that reasonable people, often against their own better judgment, will feel obliged to test those limits uh, by going into areas they don't feel entirely comfortable with. I personally haven't enjoyed the last half hour at all. I do it, I do it only to safeguard your liberty. <laughs> That's never had a clap before, which probably means it is time to stop doing this show. <laughs> and then she said to me, That's very interesting, Stu, but I don't believe you. Why would you really be telling that story? And I said to her, All I want, Mother, is just once in my life to be able to put my hand on my heart and say, in all honesty, that I've written a joke that Joe Pasquale won't be able to steal. <laughs>